We're now going to be talking in the studio to uh, Mick. He's going to be telling us all about the Stonbury Dog Club. Welcome along to the show. Thank you. I was wondering if you could uh, start us off by telling us uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, right, yes. Well, um, for um, just over 30 years, uh, I was a serving police officer with uh, the Kent Police. And uh, for most of that time, uh, I was with the Kent Police Dog Section. For the first 20 years, uh, um, I worked at Stockbury Police Kennels as the kennel keeper, um, as well as uh, working with a um, Labrador um, drug search dog uh, until my retirement. And then when I retired, I um, became the kennel manager and worked there again for another 10 years um, until uh, retirement age. Um, and that's basically me. Uh, I worked originally with a drug dog for the first four years, and then for the remainder of my service time, I worked with the uh, explosive search dog. I was wondering if you could tell us uh, a bit more about the uh, Stockbury Dog Club. Yeah, well, the Stockbury Dog Club uh, happened really because a friend of mine, uh, and my wife, um, bred a litter of white uh, German Shepherd pups and uh, she uh, having rehomed a couple of them she then retained the remainder of the litter and sort of kept them with her, within her own family and uh, obviously it got to the stage where she felt they ought to um, start to learn things so becoming a little bit uh, under out of control and um, so she asked me if i would uh, help her train uh, with her family help her train the dogs which i said yes and then uh, after a short while, uh, one or two other people heard about it and came, and that's it, it stemmed from there. And that was in about March 1993. And I know you wanted to talk about donations to animal charities. Yes, that's right. Um, from the uh, fees that we uh, charge uh, on our training days um, is uh, collected. Uh, is banked and then um, at various uh, periods throughout the year um, we decide who we're going to donate uh, to and we have a list of uh, local animal charities within Kent uh, that we donate regularly to and we try to make for each um, charity a donation of £250 uh, and each time we donate, it should, we usually donate each time about £1,000 so that's uh, um, probably uh, uh, four charities that um, uh, will receive money each time we decide to donate. How are you funded at the club? Um, we're a non-profit organisation and in actual fact the only funds we have is the fees that the uh, um, public pay to us to train their dogs. Uh, every trainer is a volunteer. Um, we um, don't have to pay for the use of land because uh, again uh, we have uh, a good sponsor who allows us to use their land um, so um, apart from just having to have the required insurance during the period of training um, we have no other outgoings at all. And um, we can understand that uh, 10,000 has been given to animal charities. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, in the beginning, um, we raised about £2,000 uh, to sponsor a, um, uh, two hearing dogs for deaf people. Uh, and then after that, we decided that we would uh, donate to local animal charities. And uh, uh, to date, we've raised just over £8,000 towards them. So a total of £10,000 so far. Do you give uh, training and behaviour advice? Um, yes, we give training advice. It's it's more pet obedience and uh, um, just uh, normal um, behavioural problems that uh, owners may get when they take on a puppy or if they take on a rescue dog. Um, and uh, we try to help them through. It's uh, If they belong to the club, it's free. Um, and uh, um, if they want, then we can follow it up and uh, keep an eye on things for them. It's... Uh, um, it works very well with young puppies because the sooner you start to um, slowly train a puppy then the better behaved it becomes as it gets older. Um, Mick, I know you've got the uh, Club Fun Dog Show coming up. That's right, yes, this next Sunday um, at uh, our training venue which is in the village of Hartlip 
it's uh, a meadow um, right next door to the village pub uh, the rose and crown and uh, all the dog the members dogs so uh, you can take part in various uh, um, events uh, such as uh, the best um, crossbreed uh, under a certain height or best crossbreed over a certain height or um, various uh, fun events uh, that uh, the handlers can put their dogs in it's uh, it's the one day a year when uh, the handlers and their dogs they can let their hair down a bit and have an enjoyable hour and a half um, in hopefully good weather how can our listeners find out more about the club um, right, well, we've got our own website, which is uh, Um That's updated fairly regularly, and you can see on the website uh, um, details of our training days, um, also details of our organised walks, which is something rather special, because uh, um, when we organise uh, a club walk... Um, as many as possible take their dogs, uh, go to certain um, areas that uh, we've used in the past, such as the Woodland Trust, uh, Capstan Park, um, places uh, down in East Kent, um, where they can take them off-road and let all the dogs off. And it's something to see when you see about 25 to 35 dogs all running free, no arguments, uh, all enjoying it, and their handlers just walking along with them. Mikola, thank you very much for coming along and telling us all about the Stockbridge Dog Club this evening. Thank you very much for having me.